We are filing a lawsuit against Donald Trump for violating the law as part of his efforts to generate profits for himself, his family, and his company. The complaint demonstrates that Donald Trump falsely inflated his net worth by billions of dollars to unjustly enrich himself and to cheat the system, thereby cheating all of us. You just heard from New York Attorney General Letitia James announcing that she will be filing a lawsuit against Donald Trump and his children related to the alleged financial fraud they engaged in. Now, aside from naming Donald Trump himself, Letitia James also mentioned how his children have been implicated in this civil, not criminal, civil investigation. Let's watch. He did this with the help of the other defendants, his children. Donald Trump Jr., Ivanka Trump, and Eric Trump, and former Trump Organization CFO Alan Weisselberg and Trump Organization controller Jeffrey McConney. Mr. Trump and the Trump Organization repeatedly and persistently manipulated the value of assets to induce banks to lend money to the Trump Organization on more favorable terms than would otherwise have been available to the company. To pay lower taxes, to satisfy continuing loan agreements and to induce insurance companies to provide insurance coverage for higher limits and at lower premiums. So let's look at the bright side of the story. The bright side is finally there's an investigation into financial issues, financial fraud. That is something that I wish the Mueller report looked into more, not in regard to his financial alleged financial fraud here in the United States, but more importantly, any business ties that Trump could have had with the Russian government and whether those ties had any influence on Donald Trump and his leadership. That would have been an interesting investigation. Now, fast forward to today, and we finally have an announcement indicating that Letitia James has concluded her investigation and she has enough evidence to bring forward a, a civil suit to hold Trump and his children accountable for their actions. Now, I would also like to see a criminal invest, a real criminal investigation into this because fact of the matter is any normal ordinary American who's caught defrauding the IRS or defrauding banks in order to qualify for mortgages, I'm sorry, for loans that they otherwise would not have qualified for or insurance that they otherwise would not have qualified for. We would all go to prison for that. We would all be criminally investigated for that. And so Letitia James is focusing on the civil suit, but there should be a criminal investigation and there allegedly is, but there are some issues with that and I'll get to that in just a moment. Now, what does Lachisa James hope to accomplish through this civil suit? Ordinarily, we will hear about fines and those fines tend to be a quick slap on the wrist and everyone moves on. But it appears that she's calling for something that goes a lot further than that, and I'm in favor of it. So the suit asks the New York Supreme Court to bar Trump, as well as Donald Trump Jr., Ivanka Trump, and Eric Trump from serving as executives at any company in New York, and to bar the Trump Organization from acquiring any commercial real estate or receiving loans from any New York registered financial institution for five years. Now that last part is kind of irrelevant for Donald Trump specifically because no one wants to loan him money because he never pays anyone back and has gone bankrupt six different times. But I'm sure it's gonna sting for people like Ivana Trump, I'm sorry, Ivanka Trump, because she is very much a businesswoman. I'm sure that she still qualifies for loans and this will have an impact on her. Now, we need to see more proof, obviously, of, of the alleged fraud that Letitia James is tying the children to. I'm not denying that there was fraud taking place, that they engaged in it. I'm just saying that so far from what I've seen in the public, the evidence indicates that Donald Trump, with the help of his financial guy, the Weisselberg individual that was mentioned in that video, you know, he's the one who essentially lied to the IRS and lied to banks. 
And so there should be consequences for that. Now the lawsuit also seeks to recover more than 250 million in what James's office says are ill gotten gains received through the alleged deceptive practices. While the lawsuit itself is not a criminal prosecution, James said she has referred possible violations of federal law to the Justice Department and the IRS. In fact, with that said, I do want to go to the last video here because in her press conference, she also sent a message to both the DOJ and the district attorney in Manhattan. Let's watch. As part of demonstrating illegality under that section of law 6312, we show that they violated several state criminal laws, including falsifying business records, issuing false financial statements, insurance fraud, and engaging in a conspiracy to commit each of these state law violations. We believe the conduct alleged in this action also violates federal criminal law, including issuing false statements to financial institutions and bank fraud. And we are referring those criminal violations that we've uncovered to the United States Attorney for the Southern District of New York and the Internal Revenue Service. So right there, she's clearly saying our investigation while focusing on you know the civil investigation that we're doing. We also notice no, there's enough evidence here to pursue criminal charges against Donald Trump, both federally and through state prosecutors. Now, the idea that the Justice Department will indict Donald Trump and his children on criminal charges related to his financial fraud, in my opinion, is inconceivable. We have gone through multiple days of the January 6th hearings. We have seen endless evidence of Donald Trump's role in the riots that took place on January 6th. And so far, we haven't heard a peep from Merrick Garland, the Attorney General, in regard to whether or not Trump will be indicted or face any criminal charges related to that. So the idea that he'll face criminal charges from the DOJ in regard to his financial fraud, again, I think is inconceivable. I could be wrong, I would be pleasantly surprised. but. The federal government is pretty notorious for giving individuals engaged in financial fraud a pass, or if anything, a small slap on the wrist. Now let's talk about the state though, because I think that criminal investigation is a little more interesting. Because believe it or not, there was a criminal investigation by the district attorney in Manhattan. And it turned out that he just kind of backed off that criminal investigation. And I'm uncertain as to why he made that decision. So who I'm referring to here is Alvin Bragg. And we've talked about his criminal investigation before. Jenk and I have been very critical of the fact that he decided to kind of pull out of the investigation. And after there was backlash, he kind of changed his tune and purports to still be investigating him. In fact, let's go to graphic four here. The inquiry faded from view after signs emerged suggesting that Trump was unlikely to be indicted. Based on what, by the way? Unlikely to be indicted based on what? But Bragg said in April that the investigation, which began under his predecessor, Cyrus Vance, was continuing, though conveniently, he did not offer a clear sense of its direction. And remember, we also shared the story of two different prosecutors who resigned from Alvin Bragg's office because Alvin Bragg had backed off of the criminal investigation into Donald Trump. Bragg's comments came after two prosecutors who had been leading the investigation left the office. One of them, Mark Pomerantz, said in a resignation letter published by the Times, the New York Times, that he believed the office had enough evidence to charge Trump with numerous felonies. Pomerantz said that Mr. Bragg's decision was contrary to the public interest. And it appears that Letitia James agrees with that. That's why she included the necessity of a criminal investigation, both federally and through the state. So will Alvin Bragg feel the pressure to actually move forward with the criminal investigation, knowing full well that Letitia James says there's enough evidence to pursue criminal charges against Trump? We'll see, we'll see what happens, we'll see what his reaction is. But I think it's also a far more interesting question, something that should be answered. Why did he decide to back off the criminal investigation in the first place? What's going on behind the scenes? 
And this idea of, well, I mean, he was unlikely to be indicted, so. So you're not gonna try? We're not even gonna try. We're not even gonna try. You have Trump's former personal attorney on the record testifying under oath, talking about Michael Cohen. He said under oath that Trump would inflate the value of his assets in order to qualify for insurance and loans that he otherwise would not would not qualify for. And he would deflate his assets in order to dodge taxes. I mean, one year he got a massive tax refund from the federal government to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars. So really, we're not gonna, we're not gonna pursue criminal charges against him? I think that's super shady and super questionable. And I think the public deserves to know why.